Today's message title is Decoding the Coding of the Human Spirit Through Meditation. I'll repeat that again. Decoding the Coding of the Human Spirit Through Meditation. Hallelujah. I'll repeat that once again. Decoding the coding of the human spirit through meditation. Now let's open the word of God to Ecclesiastes 3.11. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes 3.11 and I'm reading it from the KJV. I'm reading from the KJV. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he hath set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God make it from the beginning to the end. Can I, can, Asir, can you read this in the Amplified Version, please? Yes. Ecclesiastes 3.11, I want from the Amplified Version. AMPC 311. Go ahead, shoot. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He also has planted eternity in men's heart and uh. finds a divinely implanted sense of purpose walking through the ages, which nothing under the sun but God alone can satisfy, yet so that man cannot find out what God from the beginning to the end. Amen. Amen. Uh I want uh I want someone to read it for me from the end. Can you read it from the NKJV too? Yes. NKJV. Yeah, NKJV. Okay. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts. Except. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. Okay, we need to understand one thing. Hallelujah. What is this verse saying? Hallelujah. My message title is Decoding the Coding of the Human Spirit Through Meditation. Hallelujah. And I told you to read Ecclesiastes 3.11. Hallelujah. It says, He hath made everything beautiful. Listen to me. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. In his time. Also, he hath set the world in their heart. Hallelujah. He has he also he had set the world in their heart. The word heart here is your human spirit. Hallelujah. The word heart here is the human spirit. So it's saying that God, hallelujah, he has set the world in your human spirit. He has set the world in your human spirit. How many of you are getting this? Come on. Hallelujah. I'll repeat that again. He hath made everything. I want everyone to say that with me. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, also he hath he hath set the world set the world in their heart in their heart in their human spirit in their human spirit so that. So that no man, no man can find out, can find out the work, the work that God make it, that God make it from the beginning to the end, from the beginning to the end. Understand one thing, my brother and sister, everything you need, everything you want. Hallelujah. The world is been engrafted or you can say the word is the world is put everything that you need in the world. It is put in your spirit man come on somebody i am not saying it but word of god is saying it how many of you just read it right now the world hallelujah he has set the world in their hearts god hallelujah and he's saying but no man can find out the work god does hallelujah he's saying i put it in your heart but for you to decode hallelujah the cord Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. You need to decode it. Hallelujah. It is coded. Come on, someone. Hallelujah. God has put it in your heart and he's put a code. And he's saying you need to decode it now. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. If you want blessings in your life, it is within you. 
It is not with me. God is saying it's not with me. I have set the world in your heart. Come on, someone. So where is the things that you need? You need a house. You need wealth. You need blessing. You need children. You need marriage. You need education. Where is it? Hallelujah. It is in your spirit, man. Hallelujah. And you can only unveil it. Hallelujah. When you understand you are a spirit. And you need to commune with your spirit man. If you don't commune with your spirit man, you will only be left praying to God. God is saying, Raphael, you're praying for a life partner. You're praying, praying for increment. You're praying for this. You're praying for that. I have put it within you. Now speak to your spirit man. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. David spoke to his spirit and said, oh, my soul. Actually, it's oh, my spirit. Hallelujah. He, listen, David spoke to his spirit. He spoke to his soul and I'll prove it to you. Hallelujah. His son Solomon spoke to his own spirit. He communed with his own spirit man. How many of you are getting this? God has put everything in your subconscious mind, which is in your spirit man. So you need to decode it and then manifest it in the realm of the, in, sorry, in the physical realm. You want a house, your house is in your spirit. Hallelujah. Whatever you want, it's in you because you pray. Listen, the moment you pray for anything, understand whatever you asking God, it is not with God. I said it is in your territory in the realm of the spirit. It's in your spiritual location in the realm of the spirit. And when you say, God, I want a house. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. That house drops into your spirit, man. Hallelujah. Because God is a giver. Whenever you ask, he says, ask and I shall give it. Ask and you shall receive. Am I right? What does God say? Ask and you shall receive. Who are you? Come on. Simple question. Let me simplify it. Who are you? And today I want, I want people to communicate. Okay. So I'm going to allow you to mute yourself. Can someone answer me? No. I love, I love, yeah. No one knows who you are. Who are you? Come on, somebody. You need to understand one thing. Who are you? You are a spirit being. Hallelujah. Who are you? You are a spirit being. So everything God has put within you. See, understand one thing. What does the Lord say? You are, a, you are, you are the light of the world. When, whenever you see the word you, you need to understand one thing, who you are. It's not talking about your flesh. It's not talking about your soul. It's talking about your spirit. You are a spirit. Because you don't know who you are, you are not operating on who you are. Understand one thing. I always keep saying you are a spirit. You are a spirit. You are a spirit. You have a soul and you live in a human body. Hallelujah. So you need to decode. Listen to me. When God, when you pray and you say, God, I need a house. God drops it in the realm of the spirit. And now you need to access the spirit realm and locate where your house is. Hallelujah. How many of you are getting this? When you listen to how many of you have seen a dream that you have prayed for? You prayed for something and you get a dream. Okay. I you get, I'm not asking you all to put your hands up. Just listen to me. Hallelujah. You're praying for something and then you get a dream. And you say, I prayed for this and I saw this in my dream. Hallelujah. 
What does that mean? Your dream or a vision signifies that now the location of what you ask is changed. It's no more now. It's no longer now in the spirit realm. It is in your spirit. Because now, hallelujah, when you go to sleep, your spirit, hallelujah, is revealing because you are praying. The, your spirit, you get, you get vision, you get dreams. You have a feeling, yes, I'm close to my house. I'm close to my blessing. I'm close to it. You know it. So what is left is for you to manifest it. But however, many Christians are yet praying and only asking God, not knowing how to operate strategically. Uh, let's open the word of God to Ecclesiastes 1, verse 8 and 9. And I'm reading it from the KJV. Ecclesiastes, Sabobdeshak. Ecclesiastes 1, 8 and 9. And I'm reading from the KJV. I'll first read KJV and then I will read the NKJV. All things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing. Not the ear filled with hearing. The things that hath been, the things that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. So there is now no new thing under the sun. I know it will be difficult for people to understand KJV. So I'm reading now from the NKJV. Ecclesiastes 1, 8 and 9 NKJV. All things are full of labor. Man cannot express it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing. Hallelujah. No, the year filled with hearing. That which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. The word eye and the word ear is not talking about your physical eye and ear. Hallelujah. All things are full of labor. Man cannot express it. Hallelujah. God is saying, if you stay in the human flesh, if you are operating carnally, you are going to see labor. Because all things are full of labor when you operate from the realm of flesh or the realm of the physical. And man cannot express it. Hallelujah. Your human flesh is not able to understand why I need to labor. Why am I laboring? Hallelujah. Because the things of the spirit is not understood. Hallelujah. By the flesh. Come on, somebody. The eye is not satisfied with seeing. Your spirit eyes knows everything. Your spirit man that has an eye, spiritual eye. Can you admit? Hallelujah. Your spiritual eye, listen to me. Your spiritual eye can see your struggle. And it's not satisfied seeing your struggle. It's why are you struggling? Not the ear filled with hearing. I don't have money. I don't have this. I don't have that. The spirit is like, man, you have everything in you. And you're like, I'm struggling. I don't have money. I don't have this. How many of you are getting this? Hallelujah. Your spirit is not able to understand what are you saying? You have a bank account. You have you have zillions in it. Forget about million, billion, trillion. I'm talking about you have zillion in it. You have the money. All you need to do is just get out of your house with your ATM card and just withdraw what you want. Hallelujah. But you are struggling. You are struggling. Your spirit is like, Man, you have the potential. You have you have everything. You want gold, you have gold. You have silver, you want silver, you have silver. You want wealth, you, your spirit eye and your spirit ears. See and hear everything. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. How many of you are getting this? Hallelujah. That which has been is what will be. Come on, somebody. That which has been, it's talking about the realm of the spirit. 
It's talking about bringing the things from the realm of the spirit into your spirit man. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. That which has been in the realm of the spirit is what will be. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. It's very easy for you and me to bring things from the realm of the spirit into our spirit man. But from our spirit man to manifest, hallelujah, hallelujah, it takes a price to pay. Uh, we have new people coming, so I will just explain, okay, so they can understand they don't go off track to what we are teaching. Uh, I hope all are English. Loveline, you are, you can, you can, okay. Tanya and Loveline, you can understand English? Yes? Praise God. Uh, which is Sahota? If you can come on uh, the video, can you, can you uh, understand English? I want people to let us know if you can understand English. Hello. Yes. Can you understand English? No, no. In Hindi. Okay. Uh, this teaching is this teaching is only in English, brother. This Bible study is only in English, not in Hindi. I'm so sorry, but uh, the Bible study is only in English. Okay. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So I just for those people who cannot understand, who don't understand what I'm teaching, you're coming here for the first time. Uh, okay, I just want to tell you, I'm teaching you how to acquire wealth. Hallelujah. How to, how to acquire wealth, how to get wealth. Listen, this is a year of wealth and uh, wealth and gold. And you are like, you're praying, God, I want to get wealth. I want every blessing. Hallelujah. Every blessing that God has kept for you. How can you get it? How can that blessing come in your life? Hallelujah. Understand one thing. Whenever you pray, whatever you pray, whenever you pray, you need to understand one thing. You are a spirit. Okay. You are a spirit. You have a soul. Hallelujah. And your soul is a three-part being which has emotion, will, and imagination. And you live in a human body. But you need to understand you are a spirit being. You are not a soul. You are neither a human being. You are a spirit being. Hallelujah. How many of you are getting this? You are a spirit being. So whenever you pray, hallelujah, whenever you pray, you need to understand there are three realms through which God deposits. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Through where, which God deposits. Hallelujah. Whatever you pray. First is the realm of the spirit. Whenever you pray, you're saying, God, I want a, I want, I want a husband. For example, you are praying, God, give me a life partner. Hallelujah. You're praying, God, give me a life partner. The moment you pray to God, the father, and you say, father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you for a life partner. Hallelujah. The Bible says, ask and it shall be. Hallelujah. Ask and you shall receive. Hallelujah. Ask and it shall be given to you. Hallelujah. So you need to understand whenever you pray. Hallelujah. You prayed for a life partner. Now, God has released that life partner in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. How many of you are getting this? Whatever you pray, hallelujah. Whenever you pray, every of your prayer, is the answers are in the realm of the spirit. And when you begin to now, now when it's in the realm of the spirit, how can you bring things from the realm of the spirit into your spirit? There are three realms. The first thing is the realm of the spirit. The second is the realm of your human spirit. You are a spirit. Hallelujah. Who are you? You are a human spirit. And your human spirit consists of subconscious mind. Hallelujah. Unconscious mind and conscious mind. Hallelujah. Hindi mein hum usko vivek kete hai. Hallelujah. Okay, so you need to understand your spirit consists of subconscious unconscious and conscious mind. So whenever you pray, hallelujah, God drops it in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. 
And then, hallelujah, what do you do? How, you how do you bring it from the realm of the spirit into your spirit? Hallelujah. You do it by speaking in tongues and meditation. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. You do it by speaking. The moment, listen to me. First thing, when you ask God, it's dropped in the realm of the spirit. Second, you begin to pray in tongues. You begin to pray in tongues. Why? Hallelujah. So that your train doesn't get derailed. You're on the right track. Hallelujah. You're heading rightly. So you need to speak in tongues. Hallelujah. And when you speak in tongues, what is exactly? Why do you speak in tongues? Why you need to speak in tongues? So that you no more are in the flesh, but you are in the spirit. You're not in the flesh. You're not in the soul. You're not praying through your soul. Many people pray through their soul. Hallelujah. When you speak in tongues or pray in tongues, you are cut off from the flesh. You are cut off from the soulish realm. You are now in the realm of the spirit. How many of you are getting this? Hallelujah. I'm trying to simplify this to you because we have new people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what happens is now you are praying in the you're praying in tongues. When you are praying in tongues, you're cutting off. You're being cut off from the flesh. You're cut off from the soul. No more your mind is wandering here and there. Now you are on the right track. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Are you getting this? Uh, now you are on the right track. And as you speak in tongues, hallelujah, come on. You now, hallelujah, you, a, a time comes where you feel like being still. You're praying, you're praying, you're praying, and then you just feel like go, going slow in tongues. That's when you are now reached your spiritual location. Hallelujah. And now, hallelujah, you are bringing forth what is in the realm of the spirit into your spirit. How many of you, you become that courier guy or woman where you carry things from the realm of the spirit and you deposit it within your spirit man, not in your soul, not in your body. How many of you are getting this? Come on, somebody. I'm teaching you something very important. Hallelujah. How many of you are getting this? Am I communicating to you? Hallelujah. If yes, show me your thumbs up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now we head from here. Now what? Now when, hallelujah, you are praying in tongues, you know, you become quiet, you are meditating, you are seeing your house, you're seeing your life partner, you are seeing your job, you are seeing your promotion. Hallelujah. Amen. And you are getting it into your spirit man. Now it's in your spirit man. Hallelujah. From your what? Next. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes 1, 8 and 9, NKJV. Okay, Ecclesiastes 1, we just read it, we'll read it again. Listen, all things are full of labor. Hallelujah. All things are full of labor. Man cannot express it. Hallelujah. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. Hallelujah. Nor the ear filled with hearing. That which has been is what will be. And that which is done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. Come on, somebody. Listen to me. Listen, Solomon is saying something very deep. Hallelujah. And only people who are of the spirit can understand. Hallelujah. And decode and demystify this out. Come on, someone. Hallelujah. He's, Solomon is saying, my spirit. Hallelujah. Can I exactly tell you? He's saying, my spirit man is not able to understand why are men struggling? Why, why is my flesh struggling? Hallelujah. My spiritual eyes are not able to understand. The eye is not satisfied with seeing. The eye is seeing it within itself and seeing wealth and seeing every blessing. And then it sees that it looks at the flesh and says, why is this flesh of mine struggling? Why is this house in which I live struggling? Why is the soul struggling? Come on, somebody. The year, the spirit, your spiritual year is hearing God continually. However, neither the soul nor the flesh is able to hear the voice of God. And then you say, God, speak to me. Huh? Your spirit man is exactly like, huh? speak to me. Like seriously. 
God is speaking 24 7. So, why is the voice, where is the voice of God being blocked in the soul or in the flesh? God is giving strategies of how to get wealth, how to bring the wealth of the Gentiles and manifest it in the physical. Why are you not able to hear? Your spirit man is not able to understand. Hallelujah. And it says, that which has been is what will be. Hallelujah. Your spirit man is saying that which, hallelujah, that it's which has been, which will be, sorry, that which has been, hallelujah. The spirit man is saying it. I saw it in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. I saw the wealth that God has kept for you and I brought it within me. Hallelujah. And saying soul, he's explaining to the soul, listen, and the body. Hallelujah. That which has been, that what I'm carrying with me now, which you cannot see, you can have access to it. I have access to wealth. Hallelujah. How many of you are getting, I know this is a bit difficult now here. Yes. Let me break it down. That which has been is what will be. In other words, that which was in the realm of the spirit is now with me. Is now with you. Solomon is telling himself, you saw it in the realm of the spirit. You saw the wealth. You saw the kingship. Come on, somebody. No one is going to take the throne. Hallelujah. Solomon is telling himself, I am going to sit on the throne. Why? Hallelujah. Absalom is not going to sit on the throne. Because that which shall be, that because that which has been in the realm of the spirit, I saw myself sitting in the, on the throne and here I'm going to sit on the throne. Come on, somebody. Are you getting this? That which is done is what will be done. I saw, the, I saw myself ruling Israel in the realm of the spirit. I will rule Israel in the physical too. Are you getting this? Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. How many of you are getting? How many of you are getting this? Hallelujah. Listen, understand one thing. What Solomon is trying to say in the book of Ecclesiastes, what, what Solomon is trying to say is, in the book of Ecclesiastes is, we live in parallel realms. We live. Listen, if this is the realm of the spirit, then this is a physical realm. Are you getting what I'm saying? If this is a realm of the spirit, then this is a physical realm. We need to bring the things which is here into this realm. Hallelujah. You bring it from the realm of the spirit into your spirit. And then from your spirit, it has to go through your soul to manifest in the physical. But for your blessings, for your blessing to manifest from, the, from, from your spirit, into the physical, your soul should be pure. If someone hurts you, if someone hurts you, you can be hurted, but not be offended. Being hurt is not wrong, but be, being offended and living in offense is wrong. In other words, what is offense to the people who are coming to you too? I say something wrong and I hurt Brother Rehoboth, for example. But he as a son understands that whatever my spiritual mother, the prophet is Rama, tells me is for my own good. So I need to learn and not keep hurt in my heart. Hallelujah. So he takes it as a correction. Hallelujah. A new dimension, a new realm is open for him. But if, hallelujah, I shout at Brother Rehoboth. Hallelujah. I shout at him because I want to discipline him. However, he's a man who, is, who, be, who lives in offense. Oh, Prophet Isrema said like that to me. My heart is broken. How can she say? She didn't even allow me to speak to her or give justification. And then he meditates on that. Guess what you're doing? You are not purifying your soul, but you're making your soul impure. Because of which now there is a hole in his soul. Just as an example. Hallelujah. So a person who lives in offense is a one who broods and meditates over the hurts received. If you want, listen to me, God told me one time, my daughter, if you want to see wealth, 
Stop being emotional. Hallelujah. Stop being offensive. Stop getting angry. Stop this, stop that. Only then you shall see wealth. And I said, man, I want wealth because I want to establish God's kingdom. So I started renovating my soul and repairing my soul. And building a wall around my soul. Hallelujah. So that nothing which is not of God shall come within my soul. If you don't renovate your soul and repair your soul, the enemy is going to keep coming and attacking you. And you, will, you are only sitting and even if you meditate, listen, a soul that needs to be repaired and renovated can never meditate. A person who does, listen to me, you want to know that your soul is hurt or there's a hole in your soul, start meditating. And see how deep can you go in meditation. If you can't meditate, it means your soul needs to be repaired and renovated. Simple and straight. How many of you are getting this? If your soul is not repaired and renovated, listen to me. How can it be repaired and renovated? God will bring that same problem again and again. If you are a person who gets hurt, offended, not hurt, offended, and you keep that offense. Hallelujah. God will keep doing, keep bringing people in your life who are going to hurt you. Till nothing anymore hurts you. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. How many of you know if you drink hot tea for the first time, hot, what happens? But you keep drinking the hot tea again and again and again, then what? It doesn't affect your tongue anymore. Am I right? The same thing God does. Hallelujah. If you are a person, what is your weakness? You will keep bringing that same situation again and again and again and again till you overcome it. And that's when now God said the soul is renovated. Hallelujah. The soul is renovated and now it's new. So now I can release. Hallelujah. Now, so now from your subconscious mind, it gets into your unconscious and your conscious mind. When it gets into your conscious mind, that's when you know, ah, now faith is. Come on, somebody. Now faith is. Now you can jump and say, I know. Hallelujah. Why you can't operate in faith? Because you are not able to see what God has kept for you. Hallelujah. How many of you are getting this? Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. If you do not understand, listen to me. Even though now you know, okay, everything is now in my spirit, man. What next? Okay, let's open the word of God to Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 16. I want to tell you, hallelujah, how to commune with your spirit before going more deeper. Mm. KTV. Okay, okay, read it, read it. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 16 from the Amplified was Lady TC. I entered into counsel with my own mind, mm -hmm. saying, Behold, I have acquired great human wisdom. Yes, more than all who have been over Jerusalem before me. And my mind has had great experience of moral wisdom and scientific knowledge. Wow, wow. I'm reading from the KJV. I communed with my own heart. The word heart here is spirit. Whenever you see the heart here, my own heart, it's talking about spirit, okay? So I communed with my own spirit saying, Lo, I am come to a great estate and have gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem. Yea, my heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. I'm reading from the NKJV, Ecclesiastes 1.16. Mm -hmm. I communed with my heart, saying, Look, I have attained greatness and have gained more wisdom than all who were before me in Jerusalem. My heart has understood great wisdom and 
knowledge. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Which means the soul and the spirit were communicating. Why? Because Solomon knew if I have to receive what I have, what God has kept for me, if I have to be the most wealthiest man, my soul has to understand the language of my spirit. Come on, somebody. You need to teach your, listen, your spirit man has doesn't need to understand the language of soul or your physical body. But your soul and your body has to understand the language of the spirit. How many of you are getting this? Hallelujah. Come on, someone. That's the reason Sierra and I, we speak in tongues and we interpret in tongues. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. I'll say that. I'll read that again. Ecclesiastes 1.16. NKJV. I communed with my spirit. Hallelujah. I communed with my spirit. My soul communed with my spirit. Or oh, my spirit communed with my soul. Saying, look, I have attained greatness. Which means, hallelujah. The spirit spoke to the soul. And said, look. Someone said, look. Look. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Your soul has to see what has been attained. Come on, somebody. You will never have faith until your soul says, ah, now I am wealthy. Come on, somebody. I have looked. The spirit man is telling the soul, why are you sinking? Just look at me. Look here. Here is a gold. Here is a wealth. Here is a job. Here is a nation. Here is a ministry. Here is the power. Hallelujah. I communed. I began to communicate with my spirit. The, your spirit and your soul, listen to me. How can your spirit and soul commune if they do not understand one language? You know, I have two of my sister-in-laws, okay? One knows English and Kannada. The other one does not know English, neither Kannada. She knows Marathi, Hindi. Are you getting this? So whenever they come together and speak, there's a misunderstanding, a conflict and a fight. Why? One understands Kannada and English. Other one understands Hindi and Marathi. All four languages different. Hallelujah. No one is wrong among them. The Kannada one spoke something. The Marathi Hindi one understood something else. Hallelujah. And then the Marathi Hindi went and spoke to another person who speaks Konkani. <laughs> And there was a mixed Bhilpuri out there. How many of you are getting this communication? Hallelujah. So the language of your soul is different. The language of your human flesh is different. The language of your spirit is different. So now the human flesh and the soul has to adapt, has to understand, has to uh, unlearn. Okay, let me say this. The, the, the soul has to unlearn it's language to learn the language of the spirit. Am I communicating? The soul has to unlearn the language of the soul and learn the language of the spirit man. So when they both are speaking the same language, hallelujah. The spirit, the soul now speaks the language of the spirit. The moment the soul learns the language of the spirit, now, by default, the flesh, hallelujah, adapts that same language without learning. How many of you are getting this? Wealth has a language. Richness has a language. Poverty has a language. What has your soul learned? If your soul has learned the language of poverty and your spirit 
knows or speaks the language of wealth. So your soul has to unlearn the language of poverty and learn the language of wealth. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The soul speaks the language of worry, doubt and fear. But the spirit speaks the language of faith and power. So the soul has to unlearn doubt, worry and faithlessness and fear and learn the language of faith. How many of you are getting this? Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. How many of you are getting this? If Brother Rehoboth has to go to China, either he needs a translator from China or he has to he needs to know Chinese. Because if a Chinese comes and says, Chang Wang Wang, he won't go. Brother will be like, Kabara Chala Bareke. Come on, somebody. How many of you are getting this? Can you understand what miscommunication can do? Hallelujah. Brother Rehavoth will go mad and that Chinese will become sad. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Am I communicating? Why is your life the way it is today? Come on. Why are you where you are today? Why? Someone say miscommunication. miscommunication of the spirit and the soul. Of the spirit and the soul. So how will your soul unlearn and learn the language of the spirit? When you now begin to speak in tongues and meditate. Hallelujah. When you begin to speak in tongues. What are you doing? When you speak in tongues, you sit and meditate. Hallelujah. Listen, meditation involves activation of your uh, act. Uh, wait, wait. Hallelujah. When you pray in tongues, when you speak in tongues, you begin and you begin to meditate. Hallelujah. Your soul now plays an active role along with your spirit. In other words, your spirit man is tutoring the soul to become like the spirit. Are you getting this, people of God? Hallelujah. How many of you are getting this? Very, very important. Listen to me. We all have gone to school. We all have been in the world. We have learned a lot of things which is not of the spirit. Am I right? Yes. What was the thorn in the flesh in Paul? It was his education. It was his knowledge. That was a thorn in the flesh. Because every time God spoke to him, it did not make sense to Paul. And he would be like, how can I get a uh, yes? Reasoning and reasoning and how like this and how like that. And he's like, no, my knowledge, my human knowledge is puffing up. I need to poke a pin. All the air is gone. And I need to believe God for whatever he says, whether I find logic or I don't find logic in it. Whether it makes sense to me, it doesn't make sense to me. God said, that's it. If God is saying, hallelujah. If God is saying, black is pink, black is pink. That's it. God said, black is pink till I tell you next. I was like, okay. I'll wear a black top and I'll say, how is this pink looking? And people will be like, uh-uh. Is prophet is here or in the natural realm or the spiritual realm? When God says something, don't reason. Just believe it. We are where we, we we are where we are because we reason too much. Why this? Why that? Why not? Why? 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 Hallelujah! We need to find we. You know we have this. Our soul is always used to finding sense in everything. Why is this like this? Why is that like that? Come on, somebody! 
Did God speak to you? Did your father-in-law speak to you? Did your mother-in-law speak to you? Who spoke to you? None of your business. Hallelujah. How many of you are getting this? Come on. Stop allowing your flesh or your, your soul to reason. Because your spirit believes and your soul reasons always. When God said, let there be light, creation said, hallelujah, creation accepted that light. Let there be light and there was light. Why was there light? How many of you are getting this? Can I say something that is off the topic yet in the topic? Hallelujah. Cain was whose son? Can someone answer me? Adam. Adam. Physically, yes, he was Adam's son. Mm -hmm. That's what we are taught. And it's true. Physically, yes, he was the son of Adam. Listen, he was the son of Adam, but he was the seed of the devil. Mm -hmm. He was not God's son. <laughs> Hallelujah. He was the son of Adam, but he was the seed of Satan. Hallelujah. Am I making this clear to you? Am I communicating? I say that again. He was a son of Adam, but the seed of Satan, the enemy, devil. I know you're not able to digest this. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Why did it? Okay, I want people to respond, okay? Why did Cain kill Abel? Come on. How many attended Sunday school? <laughs> Now, I want to know, why did he murder, murder Abel? Come on. I want people to unmute and speak, please. Jealousy. Uh, Brother Christopher and Pastor Clemlina say the same thing, jealousy. Anyone else? Anyone else? Come on. I want people to speak. Or else I will not tell you. Simple. Uh, what I think, is, Prophet, is that, uh, see, both they harvested and uh, they had to give their first fruits to the Lord. In but, one uh, word, please. In one word, the, the sacrifice or not, it was a displeasure by God, displeasing. God didn't, God didn't like the sacrifice what, the, the, what uh, uh, Cain gave. Cain. Uh, sorry, okay. Abel, uh, yeah, Cain, Cain gave. He didn't like the sacrifice. It was, the sacrifice was not accepted. Okay, so you're trying to say that uh, Cain was, Cain killed Abel because God did not accept Cain sacrifice, right? Yes, yes. Okay, anyone else? Jealousy, just due to, due to the, yeah, yeah. Because uh, because he heard the voice of God telling him, see, I didn't, your sacrifice is, he gave a chance to again give another sacrifice, which he didn't do it. Okay, I got it, brother. I got it, I got he it. Was the, he was not able to accept the defeat. Mm. Okay. Uh, Raphael is saying, yeah, Raphael, brother, tell me. Uh, मुनबगड एक्चुअली अगर प्रभु अच्छे मन से देता तो उसका बेट एक्सेप्ट कर लेता था क्योंकि उसके अंदर जलन था क्योंकि प्रभु उसका एक्सेप्ट था मेरा एक्सेप्ट नहीं कर इसके वजह से ओके ओके एक्चुअली टू मी व्हाई इज इट थिंक लॉजिकली माय डियर ब्रदर एंड सिस्टर व्हाट मेड हालेलुया कम ऑन I know, I know, I uh, listen to me. La brothara must take care of it. Understand one thing. If Cain was jealous of Abel, do you think after killing Abel, God would be pleased with Cain? Why would he kill Abel? Hallelujah. How many of you want to learn this? To learn this, you need to unlearn what you have learned. <laughs> Hallelujah. Understand this. I'm teaching deep. Are you ready for this? You need to unlearn what you have learned to learn something from the spirit realm. 
Hallelujah. The reason, listen to me, why the first thing, why did they sacrifice? What was the purpose? Listen, did Cain and Abel sacrifice? That's why it happened. Hallelujah. Understand one thing, the purpose of Adam, okay? The purpose of Adam for giving the, or the purpose of Abel, okay, let's let's say a, a Cain, uh, Adam and Eve taught Cain and Abel that you need to sacrifice. So then Adam and Eve taught, or teach, sorry, teach Cain and Abel what should be the sacrifice. Let's say, okay, you know, what is their profession? According to them, they need to bring sacrifice. Accepted. Okay. Cain bought vegetables because that's what he, he was a farmer. And Abel bought a lamb. Hallelujah. Why was Cain's offering not ple uh, pleasant to God but Abel's? Hallelujah. You need to understand one thing. The purpose of sacrifice was to enter into the place where they were thrown out from. Hallelujah. The purpose of Adam and Eve sacrificing to God was because of going back again into the Garden of Eden. How many of you are getting this? But however, the sacrifice did not please God because of the sin they committed. And they said, let us teach our children to bring offering and sacrifice. As Pastor Vijaya said, first fruits, okay, fine. What happened? What made Cain kill Abel? Can we go to the book of Genesis quickly? How many of you are interested in learning? And we'll go through the verse one. Okay. Now, Adam knew, he, knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I've acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Uh, sorry, the Genesis 4, okay? Genesis 4, 1 onwards. Then she bore again, this time, his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock of their fat. And the Lord respected. Hallelujah. I don't want anyone. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering and Cain was very angry and his countenance fell down. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Mark this word in your Bible. If you do well, will you not be accepted? Hallelujah. And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. What it's saying, if you, verse 6, if you do well, will you not be? Someone say, will you not be accepted? Accepted where? In the Garden of Eden. Hallelujah. And listen to me. Hallelujah. The firstborn son, hallelujah, according to the Lord, was Abel. Because, hallelujah, Cain was the son of the firstborn of Adam and Eve, but he was a seed of the enemy. But Abel was not only the son of Cain and Abel, he was a seed. The first, he was a seed of Cain and, uh, of, sorry, of Adam and Eve. How many of you are getting this? Hallelujah. Which means, who, who was the son, who was the father of Adam? God. Even though Adam sinned, yet, Hallelujah. He had the imprints of God in him. When Cain was born, as I said, he was a seed of the devil. The firstborn seed of the devil. 
So when the sacrifice was given by Cain and by Abel, Cain wanted to access the Garden of Eden to defile it. Come on, somebody. It's listen, Cain was a farmer. And he was, it was right what he brought before God because he gave the one tenth of what he was working for. Hallelujah. But Abel, hallelujah, bought the firstborn lamb. But the motive of Abel was my father lost it. What happened with my father will not happen with me. I am going back in the Garden of Eden. And guess what? Hallelujah. Guess what? Even though he had access now to the Garden of Eden. Come on, somebody. The enemy. Listen to me. My God. I'm, how many of you are getting this? I'm speaking something very deep right now. Even though Abel. The, the gates of the garden were open to Abel. Abel did not go into it. He would have not been dead. He did not get into the gates of Eden, but he walked along with his brother in the field and he was killed. How many of you are getting this? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rabba, Shekia, how do you think did Enoch walk with God and he was not? From where did he get this? Hallelujah. It says when, when, when Abel killed, uh, sorry, when Cain killed Abel and shed his blood, God is saying the blood of your brother is crying out for vengeance. God bless all of you. Shalom.